to name molecules is a very straightforward thing. They're rules. And the rules are you give them chemical names, and the chemical names are perfectly awful. And there's no rule that says you can't name a molecule after a person. So this opened up the door for us, and lately we've been naming chemicals that we've been discovering after people who we like. And there's one particular story which started with a phone call I got from New York. There's a young lady on the phone, she says she's an actress, she wants to come to Cornell for a day and talk to me. And it was a busy time and I was reluctant. And I said, what's your name? She gave me her name, didn't ring a bell. So I said, uh, were you in any kind of pictures that I might have seen? She says, well, I just made a film called Mighty Aphrodite. And I said, I missed it. And she said, uh, would it help if I told you I just got the Oscar? I said, damn right, it would come up tomorrow. And she did. And she was an absolutely charming young lady, a recent uh, Harvard graduate, Near Eastern Studies. She'd spent a year in China. And she had just made this film where she played a happy hooker, where she got an Oscar. She's uh, pretty as a daisy and a charming person. She spent the day with me. I introduced her to our animals. Uh, I challenged her to put her hand in the cockroach cage, which she did unabashedly, which is just as good because her next film was going to be with giant cockroaches taking over Manhattan. <laughs> and uh, we had a wonderful day. At the end of the day, I was supposed to take her to the airport. The flight was going to be right after the course that I was about to start. It was the first day of classes. In fact, it was Labor Day, which is not a holiday at Cornell. And uh, I said, do you want to come to class? She said, sure. Well, I'm walking down to class. I said, would you like to give the class? And to my amazement, she said, sure. So I went in there, the usual cluster of students all sitting there at the beginning of the semester, kind of depressed. And uh, I start by saying something to the effect of welcome to Chemical Ecology 623. This is going to be an unusual start. We have a young actress among us, which woke up the males in the audience. And I said, she just won the Oscar, which woke everybody up. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, Mira Servino. She came up front and, uh, needless to say, was not the essence of chemical communication that we discussed, but she was absolutely wonderful talking about filming and what have you. I'm convinced to this day that this is the one class everybody remembers and will remember for the years to come. Well, it uh, didn't end there. It turned out the next night she was on the Dave Letterman show, which is one of these talk shows that is very popular in the United States, which I never watch. Well, she apparently said she spent liberty at Cornell with an entomologist, so I started getting phone calls including from the National Academy, <laughs> wondering whether it was me. And uh, I wasn't shy, so I identified myself. And uh, we've remained uh, in touch. Uh, and I thought that uh, she deserved better than just uh, learning about entomology for a day. So the next molecule came along, which was a protective chemical produced by an aquatic beetle. And that molecule, a new steroid, now goes by the name of Mirasorvone. And by pure coincidence, that beetle is now on the stamp in the United States. And I was able to send uh, Mira a stamp saying, it's not only the molecule, the beetle itself now. And uh, that's the end of that story.